reason I'm going to label this one as part four and suspend that one as far as uh, using it right now. I'm going to go back to it. This will be labeled part four of this chapter, chapter 18 of the book, The Thunder and Silence. And the title of that topic is, Ye Are the Light. That's a heavy topic I was sharing with someone today that I'm ready to write a book just on that one chapter. <laughs> Ye Are the Light. The, the topic is, the book is The Thunder of Silence by Jewel S. Goldsmith. We are working with chapter 18, Ye Are the Light. And I'm calling this part four of the series. And my topic for tonight is wisdom is the principal thing. We're going to be talking about wisdom. Now, wisdom, what it is, what it does, how it works. So if our topic of the chapter is ye are the light, you know that we are uh, seeing light and we have come to the understanding that light Synonyms for light is life, light, love, and understanding. Ye are the light. And wisdom is the principal thing, is, a, is scripture based here. Proverbs chapter 4, uh, verses 3 and 4, 5 and 7 read, Hear ye children the instruction of a father for and it's about king solomon for i king solomon was my father's son and he was the son of king david my father taught me also and said unto me let thine heart retain my words keep my commandments and live get wisdom get understanding forget it not so he's he's admonishing us he's teaching us get wisdom, King Solomon says. Get understanding. Don't forget that. Wisdom is the principal thing. So my topic is wisdom is the principal thing. Repeat that three times with me. Let's go. Wisdom is the principal thing. Once more. Wisdom is the principal thing, and once more, wisdom is the principal thing. Then he says, therefore, get wisdom, but, and with all thy getting, get understanding. Goldsmith says in chapter 18, he opens it, and I'm going to repeat this opening two or three times. He says, we become the light of the world, and that word in proportion in proportion to our degree of illumination. And then I write in here, to illuminate means to light up, to make something visible or bright by shining light on or through it. Now that's what we're experiencing here through this lesson. What we're doing here is making the essence of chapter 18 come alive. We're practicing it. You see, we can read through those pages and read through those pages and read from the first chapter to the end of the end. You never stop to realize the goal of the author's lesson. <clears throat> so to realize the goal of chapter 18, at some point, we must practice it in real time. It is my role here as your coach, facilitator, is to slow this down and bring you into a conscious awareness of the present in the presence. Other, if I don't do that, this is just a bunch of words. And so what you have to be reminded of, and it's my role, is that we're into the understanding of the message in chapter 18. Through 
illumination. This talk is an illumination. This pass out is illumination. To become the light of the world, we become the light of the world in proportion to our degree of illumination. You're becoming more illumined. Your mind has become more, more illumined and you are rising higher and higher in, in, into a state of, or into that state of spiritual understanding. Understanding is not understanding until it is applied. That's what let your light shine means. It means to demonstrate, not only uh, 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 learn this stuff, but demonstrate it. What we do not do is defer practicing this. We don't defer, we, won't, we don't go through the lesson and say, well, I'm gonna start doing this. I'm gonna, no, it has to be in this second, this moment right now. To illuminate means to light up. My talk here is going to, or is now lighting up your consciousness, illuminating your consciousness. To light up means to make something visible or bright, to enlighten, to enlighten by shining light on or through it. This lesson is shining light. The something that is made visible or bright, therefore, must have a source from which it receives its light. The light that is coming through you through me is coming from a higher source. And you must get into that understanding in this real time moment. Thus something that is made, your mind, your consciousness as students, as participants here, that's the something, is made visible or bright your consciousness. But that, that the light that enlightens your consciousness is coming from a higher source than what we're, what you're hearing here. So Excuse that me, means- uh, Reverend Armand, are you, are you, I'm sorry for interrupting you, but are you aware that we don't see the script? Oh, no, I'm not. Yeah, we, we don't see the, the page, the, the, yeah, okay. the outline. Mm. Yeah, I'm having some trouble here. If I can't get it, I have to bypass it because it's. Okay, I just, I just didn't know if you could see it or I'm not. going to try, I'm going to try to see. Well, no, that we couldn't see it. All right. Thanks. I'm sorry for interrupting you. No, 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 good. You see it now? Mental fast. Yes. Yes, we can see it now. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go back to, we become the light of the world in proportion to our degree of illumination. To illuminate means to light up, to make something visible or bright by shining light on or through it. The something that is made visible or bright must have a source from which it receives its light. This means that the something that is lighted, which would in this case would be your consciousness here, my consciousness, shines its radiance and brilliance as reflected light. And this reflected light is inherently within this consciousness that we're experiencing now containing all of the qualities of the original source of light. Are you following that? So divine wisdom, our topic is wisdom is the principal thing. And this wisdom that we're talking about is divine wisdom. We're going to make a distinction between human wisdom and divine wisdom. Divine wisdom is reflected light. Even if it's, you're experiencing this spiritual wisdom, that's reflected light. 
being lighted by divine understanding. That's why we talked about illumination and understanding are the same. So divine wisdom is reflected like being lighted by divine understanding, which is lighted by spirit. The hierarchy I wrote here of divine understanding is this. First, we have divine understanding, followed by divine wisdom. Divine wisdom, a reflection of divine understanding. Then you have intelligence, which is the intellect. That's a reflection of divine wisdom. Going down to the shadow, from, from, from the divine to the shadow, then followed by judgment after that perception, after that opinion, after that effect. So let's look at the relationship of the moon to the sun to have to as an analogy to uh, perhaps simplify this relationship of understanding to wisdom. The relation of the moon to the sun is like that of understanding to spirit. The relationship of the moon to the sun is like that of wisdom to understanding. The relationship of the moon to the sun is like that of intellect to wisdom. So these are all relationships of the source to the object of light. Moonlight, as the example, is reflected. Like you look at the moon and say, well, look at the moonlight as though the moon is emitting its own light. The moon does not shine with its own light. The moon merely reflects the light of the sun. But even the light of the sun has an original source behind it. And yet we'll see the sunshine as though it, it is original light that emits light to every other thing. And yet there is a light behind the sun. That's the light that we're talking about. That's the understanding light that is the, is the object, is the goal of this lesson for us to rise up and transcend and go beyond the sun, go beyond intellect, go beyond human wisdom, even beyond divine wisdom. That light that is beyond and behind that, the original light, the only light there is. Ye are that light. That is the light that Goldsmith is trying to get us to understand. That is the light that you are. Ye are that light, and that light is, sh is shining through you all the time. It can be covered, but it can't not be blocked. Um, Goldsmith says here, before astronomy was a science, men thought the moon emitted its own light to the eye. This is true today, but the scientific mind knows better. The intellect seems to express the light of understanding. The intellect seems to express the light of understanding, but the science of being, science of truth reveals that it shines by reflected light. The intellect shines by reflected light. Even as the moon is part of our planetary system, so the intellect has a legitimate place in consciousness. It is when intellect becomes egotistical and thinks that it originates its own light and forms the adverse consciousness called devil or carnal mind that it is out of harmony with the divine. Lean not unto thine own understanding. I write here all problems of all kinds. On every level in life, in every relationship, is rooted in one cause. That cause is the fact that a decision or a judgment has been made and executed based on human reasoning and facts called human intelligence before receiving and relying upon guidance, instructions, called spiritual discernment from the divine light of divine wisdom, which wisdom is the reflected light of divine understanding. So I pause here to bring your attention back 
to the light of understanding. And to remind you that this stuff is what? Caught, not taught. And I'm concerned that we didn't catch all that was the aim to convey in last week's lesson. So I'll be repeating it in whole or in part going forward. This light that we're talking about, this divine light that is the light behind the sun, the one light, never moves from your presence. That's important. It is, you know, we're so caught up into studying, learning, searching, seeking, reaching out for, trying, hey, these lessons here that Goldsmith is leading us into is that you don't have to do anything for this and you don't have to go any place for this and you don't have to do anything, but come into a conscious awareness of your presence in this light and learn how to sustain yourself and maintain this consciousness and not go in and out and turn it off and on. This light never moves from your presence. You move seemingly, seemingly, seemingly from this light. How? Through darkness, which is ignorance, doubt, unbelief, double-mindedness, the belief in good and evil, and the light. The seeming, seeming, at this light is never absence, absent. The seeming absence of this light, which is what darkness is, is the only source of negative energy. And it is this energy that makes forms out of itself, like itself, appearing as the illusions of problems and trouble and, and catastrophe and trauma and sickness and disease and, 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 and problems of all dimensions in the human experience. This darkness is the source of the unreal life of the carnal mind, which is called the devil or the ego. And what the ego does, it takes your consciousness, your power, and inverts your own energy against using it against you. And this is the only creative energy there is to produce darkness in your life. The apparent brightness gained from a source decreases with increasing distance from that source. As you move away from that light, your light dulls. With increasing distance from that source. So, and correspondingly, it becomes brighter as you move closer to the source of light, proportionately. So Matthew chapter 5, 14 reminds us, ye are the light. Ye are not becoming. Ye are, you always were. You came here as the light. Jesus knew that he was the light of the world. How so? As the sun. Oh, there we go with that sun. As the sun of God. Ye are the light of the world. Ye are the son of God as I am the son of God. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid, scripture says. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it gives light unto all that are in the house. And likewise, I should be aware of my candlestick consciousness like Jesus. And my light is shining, giving light unto the, all the house and into every house that I walk in. Let your light so shine. In other words, demonstrate that you are the light. As Jesus demonstrated, taught, and then he says, teach not that I died in vain by demonstrating that I live in you as that living light today. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and they see how 
things are transformed in your life and how, how you solve problems and how you demonstrate prosperity and how you heal sickness and how you don't let things bother you and how you're always happy and always joyous and how let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father, which is in heaven. The very first sentence of chapter 18 of the book, The Thunder of Silence that we're studying here begins with, we become the light of the world in proportion to our degree of illumination. And that's what we're experiencing here Tuesday after Tuesday. Then I write, whether or not the writer or the teacher is writing or speaking in metaphors or symbolisms. It is always your responsibility and charge to hear, to put on your metaphorical hat, to hear and receive the inner meanings or spiritual interpretations of truth principles or teachings. Right now, as I am talking, there is something going on in your consciousness. There is the real voice speaking to you in an undertone under these words that I am speaking to you and speaking words of spiritual understanding. And with the impact that it has on your consciousness, it's going to release divine wisdom that then reflects through your intelligence and your judgment and your perceptions, changing all the effects in your life. In real time, simultaneously while I'm talking, this is not a deferred experience that you're gonna learn and then go and pray. Oh no, it's gotta start at some time right now. In real time, this time, simultaneously, by the gift of spiritual discernment, which is activated in your mind right now. And that is what divine understanding is. It is an attribute of God in your mind manifesting as divine wisdom and activated by the Holy Spirit, the teacher for God, which is the voice for God in your mind now. See, you are able to grasp the understanding of the heart of Goldsmith's message in this chapter, Year of the Light, by hearing his voice now. That man is not dead. His spirit is alive and here with us now. Yeah, I believe that. And because I believe that, I tap into that consciousness, ask for his help, and I receive it. But I receive it through the Holy Spirit. Again, Goldsmith says, we become the light of the world in proportion to our degree of illumination. He said, some students attain that illumination quickly and some wait, 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 read, 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 study, 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 meditate, 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 pray, Pray, pray for the great experience to descend upon them. Hey, when it comes, he says, however, it comes suddenly. Although the preparation leading up to it may have taken many, many years of studying and meditating, during which time we seem to have made little or no progress, seem to have made little or no progress. From the first moment, however, that we seriously turned to the attainment of this realization, our progress has been rapid, even though to outward appearances imperceptible. To illuminate, be reminded, means to light up, to make something visible or bright by shining light on or through it. And that's what I am doing here now as a facilitator, uh, being uh, governed by the master teacher with the capital T, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is speaking and teaching through me. I just know it. So let's look at this, these terms, intelligence, wisdom. Intelligence is based on knowledge, education, reading books, facts, analyzing, and so forth. Man's wisdom is based on understanding, 
experience, knowledge gained by either traumatic or good experiences. And so from that experience, he becomes a wise man, a wise woman, a wise person by way of understanding through experience, but that's not the understanding that we are talking about. And that's not the wisdom we are talking about. That's man stuff, intelligence, and, and that wisdom on that level. However, there's a higher wisdom that we are talking about. And this wisdom is divine wisdom, not that other stuff. Divine wisdom comes from who you are in your conscious relationship with the father of all. That's where divine wisdom comes from. It comes out of your conscious relationship with the father. Jesus had this kind of relationship. I and the father are one. He that seeth me sees the father. The words that I speak, they are not mine. They are the father who's speaking through me. All these things you see, I don't do it. It's the father who do it through me. It's a relationship. Divine wisdom comes from who you are in your conscious relationship with the father of all. Divine wisdom comprises the spiritual emotions of empathy and compassion, which are virtues of understanding, which can be lacking in man's wisdom. May not unto thine own understanding. Intelligence and wisdom are concepts that are mistaken and under, misunderstood. Let me give you a practical example of this dude called Amon. Way back when he first uh, was introduced to this thing called science of mind and the science of mind classes, he heard about them. He was first introduced by listening to the radio, getting up in the morning at uh, the seven o'clock to, no, six o'clock to seven o'clock hour where there were those the four speakers of Dr. Hornaday at six o'clock and at 6.15, followed by Dr. Richie Lou and at 6.30, followed by Dr. Joseph Murphy and, 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 and then the last 6.45 to seven o'clock, followed by uh, Dr. or Reverend Schambach, who was, a, who was a Pentecostal, more of a preacher. The others were all metaphysical teachers. And that was my introduction. And from there, I learned about Founders Church and started going to hear Dr. Hornaday. From there, I, I learned about Dr. Dan and the Guidance Church. And so I moved from my basic class of Founders and shifted over to Guidance and, and took all of my training there at Guidance Church. And then, uh, but where am I going with this? I was working at the time, you know, and, and I was working for the county at King Hospital. And I was working in uh, the accounting department. But I had started off as a, as a clerk in, at Harbor Hospital, where I was in the billing department. And what I'm talking about here is divine wisdom. Divine wisdom had a hold of me in those days at that time. It didn't take me uh, years of studying and all of that learning and all of that meditation. I just accepted it in its simplicity without making it complex. I didn't have that mind of complexity. Of course, Emiko says complexity is of the ego. I knew that something had a hold of me way back then when I hadn't, didn't even know the book yet. But in that textbook, at the back of that textbook was is a group of meditations. And when I had promoted up uh, mm -hmm. by way of experience uh, to being in the management, uh, uh, management level very early after only working two or three years there, from, from the clerk up to the accountant, uh, accounting clerk up to the accountant, you know, not by way of, of education yet, but by experience. When the exams opened, they would say, do you have the, the credits? I say, yeah. So what I do is I, I applied for it, then I ran down to UCLA for it to the, where they had extensions and took the classes real fast and qualified and aced the test. And that's how I moved up, just by divine wisdom. It wasn't expert experience. So what I'm saying is that my success was as a result of transcending intellect, transcending human experience, transcending man's ways, and it's achieving accomplishments out of the norm, out of the way of conventional ways of doing things. Divine wisdom lifts you up and transcends you and suspends all regulations and rules and stuff for you. 
It's because of your consciousness and your aura, because you're living by divine understanding and being guided by divine wisdom, which is a, a, a reflection of that understanding. And as a result, the things that you're doing intellectually is always going to be no mistakes and success. And so here I am, a supervisor over an accounts receivable department, having little experience and certainly not a lot of education. And the people who I hired under me were people with advanced degrees. I like that. And there was some jealousy and envy and all of that kind of stuff, of course. But what I would do before I went to the meetings with the heads of departments and so forth and so on, knowing that I knew nothing, I would get to my office before the doors were open and anybody else was there. And I would sit in, now I'm taking science of mind one, I'm taking basic prices. And, but what I am doing is practicing what I'm reading in that book and what I'm hearing. And so I took out uh, a, a three by five card. And in the back of that book where it says meditations, this is the one that I was guided to. I didn't go looking for that. I opened the book and there it was. You see, I'm being led by divine understanding. And this was the meditation that I found and I put it on a three by five card. You know, those boxes that you have on your desk that hold the three by five cards. I put it on top of that. I would open it up every morning and sit in the cycle. And this is what that card read from that book. My answer comes quickly and surely back to me from on high. My answer will not fail me for the law of the universe is the power through which it comes. I shall not doubt nor fear, for the answer is swift and certain. So I would have my meetings with my heads of my units. <laughs> I would give them instructions of what I've gotten from my meetings. And then I would take certain ones with me to, and the point is, is that God worked through them for me. I use their education and their brain because I use divine wisdom. So I pause here to bring your attention back to the light of understanding. This stuff is caught, not taught. This light never moves from your presence. You move seemingly from this light through darkness, ignorance, doubt, unbelief, double-mindedness, and the light. The seeming absence, seeming, the seeming absence of this light, which is what darkness is, as I've said, is the only source of negative energy. So what I'm going to do here is bring this to a wrap up by reviewing chapter one of Kings, third Kings, third Kings chapter one. We're gonna go back to the king of wisdom, Solomon. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon during the night in a dream and God said, ask for whatever you want me to give you. Let's see what Solomon asked for. Solomon didn't start asking for a home and for a car and all of this kind of stuff. We Scripture says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added. When I went to my job every morning, I didn't ask for promotions. and I just asked for the answer. You know, I, I was asking for understanding. That's what I was asking. I didn't know it then, but that was, that was the goal. That, that was the, the, the result. So Solomon answered. Solomon answered, God, you have shown great kindness to your servant, my father David, because he was faithful to you and righteous and upright in heart. You have continued this great kindness to him and have given him a son, that's me, to sit on his throne this very day. Do you know how old Solomon was? Solomon was 12 years old when his father David appointed him king. Now, Lord, my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David, but I am only a little child and do not know how to carry out my duties. Your servant is here among the people you have chosen, a great people, all too numerous to count or number. I'm head of this kingdom. Go, give your servant a discerning heart, he was asking for understanding, to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong. For who is able to govern this great nation? The Lord was pleased 
that Solomon had asked for this instead of for things. So God said to him, since you have asked for this and not for long life or wealth for yourself and all that stuff, nor have you asked for the death of your enemies, but for discernment, for understanding in administering justice. Well, I will do what you have asked. I will give you a wise and discerning heart so that there will never have been anyone like you, nor will there ever be. Moreover, and more than this, I will give you what you have not asked for. See, this is what you get, what you ask for when you ask for understanding and not just stuff and things. I will give you both wealth and honor so that in your lifetime, you will have no equal among kings. And if you walk in obedience to me and, and keep my decrees and commands as David, your father did, I will give you a long life. Then Solomon awoke and he realized it had been a dream. And so for you and for me, God speaks to us in visions and in dreams. <laughs> but he speaks to you in his voice, his voice of understanding. You got to stop making this stuff spooky and ugly and, 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 and unnatural. And uh, this is natural. It is normal. It is simple. It is like the breath that you breathe. And then what went on uh, from this experience at 1 Kings 3, a story happened, and I read it before and I want to close it with today, where Solomon now was given an opportunity to use his understanding, to use his divine wisdom, rather, to let understanding use him, to let divine wisdom guide and direct him just naturally. Now, two prostitutes came to the king and stood before him. One of them said, pardon me, my lord, this woman and I live in the same house. And I had a baby while she was there with me. The third day after my child was born, this woman also had a baby. We were alone. There was no one in the house but the two of us. But during the night, this woman's son died because she laid on him. So she got up in the middle of the night and took my son from my side while I was asleep. And she put him by her breast and put her head, put her dead son by my breast. And the next morning I got up to nurse my son, and he was dead. But when I looked at him closely in the morning light, I saw it wasn't the son I had born. The other woman said, no, 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 no. The living one is my son. The dead one is hers. But the first one insisted, no, the dead one is yours. The living one is mine. And so they argued before the king. Here it is, it was the 12-year-old boy knowing nothing about prostitutes of this way of life and having never had to, had to, and he's sitting in the seat of the judge, the king sits in the seat of the judge, and here he has to make a decision. He's had no experience. His experience would have come through, you know, mo going to school, learn how to become a judge, or having human experiences and whatever, but he didn't have time to go a crash course or a crash course. So the king said, well, now, this son, this one says, my son is alive and your son is dead. While that one says, no, your son is dead and mine is alive. Then the king said, bring me a sword. So he is being, he's using divine wisdom. He is, list, he is listening to what he is hearing in his spirit. He has no experience. He's calling upon a higher power. He's calling upon knowing the truth, hearing the truth. And so what is our charge is to practice this in real time. I'm letting you know, I do this. I practice this. The king said, bring me a sword. So they brought a sword for the king. He then gave an order. Cut the living child in two and give half to one and a half to the other. Then he paused and let truth work in the consciousness of these two prostitutes. The woman whose son was alive was deeply moved. See, this is what understanding. Understanding comprises empathy 
and compassion. The woman whose son and empathy and compassion was working in the woman's heart and mind by extension from the mind of King Solomon that reflected light from God's understanding. You see, that's what you're expecting to happen in your relationships. This thing is spiritual or it is not spiritual. It works or it doesn't. It works starting. You have all the power in you to practice this right now. When you're looking at your child, when you're talking to some business relationship, and when you're dealing with whatever, whatever, whoever, the neighbor, it doesn't matter. You should, this stuff is contagious. They should be effective, effective, effective through your consciousness of understanding by you using divine wisdom, saying what you're listening to and letting go of all of your personality. The woman whose son was alive was deeply moved out of love for her son and said to the king, please, my Lord, give her the living baby. Don't kill him. But the other said, ah, neither I nor you shall have him, cut him into. Then the king gave his ruling. He gave the living baby to the first woman. Do not kill him. She is the mother, said the king. When all Israel heard the verdict that the king had given, they held the king in awe because they saw that he had wisdom from God to administer justice. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all that getting, get understanding. And so it is. Wonderful. Yes, breathtaking. I need to applaud you on this one here. <laughs> that was that was powerful. Yeah. Thank you. Touching. Yeah, Reverend Amon, that was fire. That was the most comprehensive. I, if you were never heard anything, you just uh, pulled into this class. You would have gotten everything. I caught this. I caught this, and you were on fire. That was amazing. Thank you. Tell, tell people your name. I'm Daryl. Hey, everybody. <laughs> I listen, but I, I try and be quiet. But that was, that, that was, that was, I had to, I had to. Thank you. I, I caught it. <laughs> I am lit up. And as you were saying, that voice or something, right now as I'm speaking, I felt all of that, I, all of that was going on. So I don't want to go on. I'm just letting you know I got it. And thank you. Amen. Woo! Amen. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. Amen. But you know, I, can I just say this though? One other thing, yeah. that visual, I, you, you taught me something about the sun. It, it reflects a light too. And that space behind, that light behind the sun, that was so descriptive. That changed my world. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Lord. You know, that's why I said last week, we got to revisit last week because Last week is you, yeah, you definitely do. You definitely yeah. do. But yeah, this one can stand on its own. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. But yes. Amen. 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 To all of that. Yes. Thank yes, you. You showed up. You showed up. Yes. You really did. <clears throat> Whose voice is that? This is Howard. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> We're bringing people out who haven't said a word. <laughs> <laughs> you you, you got an idea how powerful you are now. Huh? Yeah, we are <laughs> like, you know, speaking in tongues tonight almost. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you know, I thought when you got interrupted before you had a flow going, I was feeling so remorseful, but you picked it right up and took it even further. It was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I want to thank um, Daphne for speaking up because we could have gone yes. we did do yes. that one night uh, a few weeks ago remember we went through the full night without you seeing it my, I'm having a little glitch in my system here because before mm -hmm. going on I had to reload it several times just to, just to get that one up 
So thank you. Mm. This was a good night. Yeah. Don't forget, mm. don't forget our closing. Uh, hey, I wanted to share something. Go ahead. Um, when you went into the story about the uh, two ladies and the baby, my daughter called. And remember I said I was just feeling this joyful feeling? Mm. Well, my daughter called me just a moment ago. And she sounded like her, herself again. Something in her world clicked and, and we know it was spirit. But I just want to thank you guys thank you for that opportunity, allowing me to share that with you and to turn around and get a demonstration just that fast from the beginning of our class to the end of the class for my, my baby to, to say, God woke her up this morning and she understood also, okay? <laughs> thank you, thank you. And the ironic thing is that that was just what I said to myself about you, Rochelle. That what was you are, That you are such a glow now and that you are yourself. This is Crystal. Oh, thank you. And that's really beautiful. But you guys know I, this lesson, it was just what I've experienced. I. I I feel a part of that, that system where I don't have to do much, but people come to me and, and spirit comes and I just say what spirit tells me to say. And I just, my life has just changed. I'm, I'm not, I'm not me anymore. When you see me, you see the spirit. And I know that and I understand that today. And I'm just so thankful just so thankful reverend armand was that voice later when he took over that uh early morning class that he was talking about i was listening um his first morning and from every morning after that and um soon after this book i don't know if he mentioned it in the class or if one of the other ministers that she replaced it said it uh, but my sister handed me a book called This Thing, This Thing Called You. And that was the first book that I've read from um, Ernest Holmes. So to, it was like, you were my spiritual guide when I was a child, when I was younger. And I've come full circle to actually meeting that voice and still being able to to just be guided into this next phase of who I, I was becoming. So I just thank all of you guys for, because if we didn't have the need or have that urge for the class, our, our facilitator probably wouldn't have said he was gonna have the class. So I just thank all of you for, for all of us at that time, needing and searching and, 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 and knowing we were gonna receive. Okay. Great. Okay. Well, what I'm going to do here is bring up a, a, um, a little program here on those of you who don't know how to donate. These are ways, and you can I send out the weekly announcement. Um, and at the bottom of the announcement, if I have your email address, is a little button where you can donate by PayPal, or you can go to the website, Inspirations website. You can access it three ways. You can just uh, type in revamon.com. That's revamon.org, either or, or inspirationsministries.org. Either of those three ways you can access the website where you can hit the button there and donate. Or you can use the mail, PO Box 3157, Lakewood 90711. Or you can use Zelle, which is 562-897-2697. I send the pass outs to those who will send some sort of a donation. There's no minimum amount. There's no required amount. And um, of course, you know that I don't just jump up on Tuesday mornings to prepare a lesson. I work on it seven days a week, seven nights a week. I live this stuff, as you can see. 